This week in Video Game History. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Benjamin Humphreys, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Video Game History, a show that takes a bite-sized look into events related to video games and their storied past. This week, we are taking a short trip back to 2011, a year that would see the loss of Macho Man Randy Savage, Amy Winehouse, and Heavy D. When Charlie Sheen was losing his mind on Tiger's Blood, winning, the Occupy Wall Street movement was rallying for the 99%, and turmoil in the Middle East was on every news station. But more on topic for this channel, we would also see the release of Dark Souls, Skyrim, Dragon Age 2, and Minecraft. A perfect time for these games to hit the market, as a breakthrough form of media launched during late spring of that year, which would forever change the landscape of video games and their consumption. That's right, Twitch live streaming was brought into the world and for better or for worse, one of our favorite pastimes has never been the same. On June 6, 2011, Twitch, or Twitch TV, a spin-off from Justin.tv, was launched as a live streaming website with a focus on their video game demographic. And in case you were wondering, Justin.tv was a website that allowed people to broadcast a variety of content, much like Twitch today, but this was 2007. And initially, Justin.tv was a single channel that featured Justin Khan one of the co-founders, broadcasting his life 24-7. Along with Emmett Shear, Michael Seibel, and Kyle Vogt, the other co-founders, they noticed some exceptional growth and popularity amongst their video game channels on Justin.tv, and decided to launch Twitch in order to really focus on the gaming content and revenue that it could bring in. Jump to today, and the site has over 140 million monthly active users, over 7 million people stream on the platform every month, with an average of over 2.5 million concurrent viewers, and generated about $2.8 billion in revenue in 2022. Obviously, it's a very popular website and platform that has branched out to all areas of broadcasting aside from just video games. From just chatting, live music, reactions, vlogs, and cooking, to everything in between. <clears throat> Bringing the focus back to the video game section of the platform, I believe it has proven to be a great place for game developers to reach a wider audience through first-hand interaction or observing and documenting how players are receiving and interfacing with their creations. Twitch has also become a home base of sorts for esports broadcasts, which has had a direct correlation for some of the athletes to continue their careers through streaming, with the likes of Ninja, Shroud, Ibai, and XQC to name a few. As Twitch offers different incentive programs depending on the popularity of your channel, which can pay out in the form of ad revenue or viewers donating and subscribing allowing for the possibility of a full-time job opportunity or side hustle if you're good at it. Which is exactly what happened when the lockdowns came through in 2020 due to COVID-19. People were laid off from work or stuck at home, and with not much else going on aside from Animal Crossing, Twitch's popularity and user interactions skyrocketed. Which, much like many things that experience this kind of growth, you take the good, along with the bad. Like I said before, I think Twitch is rife with opportunity. If you're able to make it work. And I'm not here to bash on anyone regardless of what type of content they're looking to get paid for. As it seems like there is a community to be made for just about anything nowadays. But for the rest of us, and especially for me, Twitch, or other forms of media like it, have become a modern form of radio stations. Instead of listening to the same 20 songs on loop every day while you're at work, you can freely choose whatever fits your mood for the time. At job sites, you can find people listening to their favorite podcast, much like radio morning talk shows. Or when you're at home, how many of you put on a live stream or restream from the day before, 
as white noise and idle chatter while you go about your chores and daily habits. Radio call-ins have been replaced with direct messages to the person streaming, not that their opinions have gotten any better with age. Advertisements are still a thing, and giveaways happen on a regular basis. So I guess the old adage of the more things change the more they stay the same can be applied here. Not that I think it's a bad thing in this case, on the contrary. Streaming has brought plenty of like-minded people together to discuss and enjoy things that they love with the added bonus of live interaction that streaming brings with it. Loads of unknown artists have been discovered and given an audience that previously wasn't so readily available. And something near and dear to my heart, streaming has, at times, shined light on forgotten video games that allowed them to be renewed and enjoyed with an entirely different generation of gamers. Now, I think it should go without saying that it isn't all positive sunshine and rainbows, as some people have developed an unhealthy parasocial relationship with their favorite streamers, though one could argue that has always been the case for celebrities. The ease of access to content not meant for a younger audience can be problematic, and social media in general is not always the healthiest form of media to be ingesting. But I don't think it takes away from the overall healthy enjoyment the majority of people are garnering from the streaming service. So happy birthday Twitch, and cheers to many more. That's it for this week in video game history. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Benjamin Humphreys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Good night.